exciting. This is very exciting. Kate, I've known you for what, 20, 21 years when we both started years. GMTV together. I know, 2000 that was, yes, yeah, so yeah. 21 years. When yeah. we started the same, the same day. But I've never interviewed you. No. And now, here we go. I know, it's strange, isn't it? Because you sort of suddenly think, oh, you know, but we're just chatting. It's just good. a chat. It's, it's just, just a chat. Just a chat. Um, and it's been really nice. So, um, it's lovely to be working on Smooth now with you as well. I feel like I feel like I've kind of followed everything you do. I kind of am there beside you. But what a year you've had, by the way. I mean, mm. I honestly can't begin to imagine what it must have been like the last 12 months for you. I know. I mean, I mean, it's been a tough year for everybody, hasn't it? You know, it's been such an extraordinary year for the planet. Um, and yeah, and I suppose... Um, COVID has affected everybody, but um, some people, like myself, it's affected very directly. So, yeah, I mean, just extraordinary. I know. I mean, we have a book. La, la, la. We do have a book, which is here. very exciting to see because I didn't quite believe... This is the first time I've actually held it. So it does feel like it's real now. Um, it's going to be published tomorrow. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a strange thing talking about this book because I want it to be really positive and hopefully really helpful for people, uh, not just people who've been affected by COVID, but with all sorts of challenges. But it's also talking about something that, that's devastating. So it's strange to be excited about it in a way, but I'm just hopeful that, you know, it can be helpful. Okay, so listen, let's go back to the, the very biggest. start. And the for anyone that has missed what's been going on in the last year, obviously COVID has affected you and your family yeah. um, more than probably the average person in this country um, in that your husband really was hit, hit badly by it. Yes, so at the end of March 2020, Derek got COVID and he was... Um, back then, it's hard to imagine because we've learned so much more now, but back then the message was very much, if you don't have a cough, if you don't have a temperature, then, um, you know, it's probably not COVID. And we were trying, which we still are now, but we were trying to ease the pressure off um, the NHS and off the services that were there to treat people who are very seriously ill. And it was a strange because I was on Good Morning Britain and obviously on Smooth as well, but on Good Morning Britain there talking about headlines, encouraging people not to, you know, panic unduly and to check your temperature, take off, call 111, but don't necessarily rush to hospital. And uh, Derek was sick. And so the end of March, um, it's strange looking back now, but even as I called the ambulance, <clears throat> I remember thinking, am I doing the right thing? Is it going to be one of those awful situations where I've, I've disturbed people that could have been treating somebody really sick? But he was really sick, even though he didn't have a temperature or a cough. And at the beginning of April, he was put into an induced coma to try and take the pressure off his lungs and his body. Um, and at that point, his kidneys had failed, his liver had failed, his heart had stopped. Um, you know, he was in a very bad way. His lungs were solid. And for a long time, we were living hour by hour, really, waiting for calls to see if he'd made it through that hour or that day. Um, and that, that stayed for a long time until really the middle to end of June when it started to look like his lungs were doing better and um, they tried to raise him from the induced coma and found that he wouldn't wake up. And I think up until that point, we'd been living with a kind of on-off terror, you know, please God he lives, please God he doesn't die. Um, and then suddenly there was this third terror coming into the picture, which was that he might live, thank goodness, but never be able to return. And so it's been since then really a process of, of trying to sort of live on a precipice really and not know. And then wonderfully, um, you know, at the beginning of this month, he was able to come home which has been amazing um, and it's it's challenging in a different way really now because um, obviously you want someone to come home but you have an image in your mind of that person coming home as sort of coming through the door weak, affected, 
damaged um, by what they've been through, but fundamentally them. Whereas Derek came home because it was decided by the doctors that he was not going to be able to progress in the situation in hospital because we're still living with COVID, we're still living with COVID restrictions, on visits, on access to things that can take place in hospital. So they said, look, we've got to try and raise him more and bring him more conscious, I guess, although he is technically conscious now, but make him more able to communicate. And so we're bringing him home. So it's a little bit of a strange feeling as though the hospital has come home with him <laughs> because we now he needs 24-hour care um, from an amazing group of people who are just angels, frankly. And, um, and so we're adjusting to life with a very different Derek. Yeah, but you've got Derek home... But he's home. And yeah. Billy and Dorothy must be just so happy to have Dad back in the house. Really happy to have Dad back in the house. But again, I think anybody who's lived with somebody who is affected, as he is now, and not knowing how he can progress, there's also adjustment there, isn't there? Because he is Dad. He's very much Dad. He is, you know, still their father. But the things that he would have done with them, he is not able to do at the moment. You know, he isn't able... He's not able to tell them off, which um, which they might think is a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, can you please speak more? Because I need to. Help. I need backup here to Derek. He's not able to tell them more, but he is able to hug them. You know, so um, so there's a lot of there's a lot of there's a lot of good there, and really, I've had a huge amount of support from smooth listeners, from all sorts of people that have come forward on social media and said, listen, you know, my husband or my brother or my father or my aunt um, have been through something not the same but similar, whether it be a devastating car accident or, um, you know, a, a stroke or something or, or been diagnosed with a, you know, a life-limiting situation. And people have come forward and, and have given me so much help with what they've had to deal with. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to write the book, partly because I feel like Derek would have probably written one if he could. He may still write a book. I'm not writing it out. I'm sure he will, as soon as he can, I'm sure he'll want to tell his own story and, and think, get out of the way, Garraway. I want to tell my own story. <laughs> but in the meantime, I've tried to tell his story and our story as well as I can. But also, you know, share some of the things. Because I think we're at a strange place now, aren't we? There's a lot of hope around. It feels like the sort of horror we've been living through is lifting, you know, we can do more now, fingers crossed, and fingers crossed the vaccine has given us a chance for freedom back and to begin to rebuild life. But everyone's lives are going to be different by this. Yeah. Everyone's going to be changed. And so I kind of think there's a lot that I've been given in that I've put into the book that hopefully will help people because we're all trying to work our way into a new future. Yeah, now, it's like a new normal for everyone, isn't it? It's a new normal or, and it could be a better normal, yeah. you know? It could be it could be better, it could be different, but it's, it's we're all, everybody's got wounds, I think. And the thing is as well, for what you've gone through over the last year, a lot mm. of people have been quite private. What, what they've experienced has been behind closed doors or within just their yeah. immediate family. But what's happened to you and to Derek and for Billy and, and Darcy, it's played out. Mm in front of everyone and yes everyone's on your side and being supportive but it means that there's no escape everyone's going to be always asking you how does it feel um, knowing that everyone's aware of what's going on well um i feel a massive sense of responsibility actually because i think um there's a lot of people that have had to go through what i've been going through you know, in a way, alone. And I think that must be very hard. And I felt quite guilty about that for a long time, actually, because I think one of the pluses of having a job in TV and radio is more people know you than just your neighbours and your friends. And so I've had a lot of people saying, keep going, good luck. And I thought, gosh, it must be so hard dealing with that if you don't have that. But then my friend Rob Rinder, you know, Judge Rinder said, but actually everyone's got their own network. And if you can tell people's story back, then that will help them, which made me feel less guilty. 
Uh, the other thing is, is Derek has always been quite a colourful character. And even though his life has been more private, you know, in recent years, because he's been working as a psychologist and, you know, has left his political life behind. Um, I kind of think... You know, he it's his bad luck that he happens to be married to a TV and radio <laughs> presenter. So it's kind of out there. And you don't really know any different, do you? So in a way, I think it's been very, very positive yeah. to have, you know, that that support. I mean, sometimes there have been moments where you think, oh, my goodness, I'm feeling a bit tearful now. and And also I'm very conscious that it's not just me telling my story it's also his family and his friends and you know there's um there's other people affected but actually people have been wonderful and it's really supportive and that's one of the good things i think about lockdown i don't know if you've experienced it on your show but certainly on smooth you know people have have wanted that connection because they haven't been able to get it by seeing their own friends and family. So it actually feels like a nice thing that we can do in yeah. radio, isn't it? That we can provide that connection. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's true. Does it does it help you coming into work as well? Because obviously I knew you were at home for a significant amount of time, yeah. but then there was a point where you came back yeah. to Smooth and to Good Morning Britain as well. But did that help? Is that, why I think did you decide? it really to... does. Yeah, sorry to interrupt you. I think, it, it, I think it's been amazing, actually. Smooth has just been fantastic because there's so much joy in Smooth. There's so much joy in music, yeah. you know. And one of the things that disappeared was music for me um, because uh, my life was on the phone to the hospital, on the phone to other doctors, dealing with the kids and... Actually, when you're in that sort of adrenaline crisis, um, you don't step out of it. And actually, before you know it, you can feel like joy can almost feel a little bit wrong. You feel like I shouldn't be enjoying this song. But actually, you come to realise that you need it in your life because it sustains you, you know. And, you know, on Smooth, we don't tackle the serious issues of COVID or we don't deal with the nitty gritty of stuff in the sense that, you know, other stations like LBC do um, because we want it to be a place where you can escape from all of that. And so it, it became a place of escape for me, you know, coming in um, and listening to music and sharing um, it was was a wonderful thing to do and has been a wonderful thing to do. And the really amazing thing is actually people do get in touch and talk about the situation with Derek, talk about sad things in their life. So the fact that they know what I'm going through, I think is sort of, made it feel like we're going through it all together yeah. and we all sort of understand that need and we do have great music and Elton John oh well I was about to see I Elton mean, John I mean I he's mean, been all over this so if he? you so if you're going to get help from people and su be supported yeah. by by the audience which is absolutely the case it's like a little cherry on top when Elton John gets in touch we saw in your documentary yeah. there was a little bit where you're on the phone going, it's Elton John. I know. How, how did that Surreal. happen? Surreal. I mean, it's so strange, isn't it? I mean, I've obviously, like, you have interviewed Elton uh, over the years and David as well. Various things like Romeo and Juliet and Billy Elliot when it first came to the stage because I'm very old, much older than you, Jenny. Um, I was, I was there that like, night as well. <laughs> oh, sorry? I was there that night, you Billy there, Elliot no, no. with them. Know, it's yeah. amazing. It's amazing. Well, you were just very young when you were doing it, that's all. <laughs> So, you know, it's not as though he hasn't been lovely to be around, but he has been so privately supportive to me. Um, it, it, he's just been wonderful. And also, interestingly, his music is something that Derek loved anyway. And we ended up playing lots of his music to Derek. He was saying, look, some play music in the coma. And I don't think he was particularly suggesting play his songs. He was just knew how important music is to people. Even when you're unconscious, it's, it's fantastic because it's, it's stimulating to the brain in a different way from just talking is um it connects with memories and things that might stimulate them and it was billy that said we should play him rocket man because it's rocket man is um 
is all about, if you listen to the lyrics, somebody floating above and trying to get back. And he just felt that it was so... He, Derek was Rocket Man. Sorry, Elton, you're still Rocket Man, really. <laughs> but, um, but Derek was Rocket Man and we started playing it. And it just it just seemed to be a wonderful thing. And, and we've continued to do that. And, and actually, um, since um, we now... Derek is more conscious. We're now talking to, you know, experts who say music is a fantastic thing for coordinating movement and inspiring movement because it taps in to a different bit of your brain and one of Derek's challenges now is something called initiation which is essentially initiating everything so um, Derek does respond if you say to him are you hot, are you cold he can give a yes or no but what he can't do is say I am too hot or I am too cold that starting of thought and that starting of movement is still a journey we have to go on. And music is really good for unleashing that. So one of the things I'm trying to look into is some kind of music therapy because it sort of goes into a different bit of your brain that is connects up differently. And so, yeah. So Elton doesn't get off the hook yet. He's still part of our life. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it is amazing how music therapy can really make a difference. Globals make some noise. I visited a music therapy centre and it was incredible to see the work they can do. Really well, you'll have to give me the number. Yeah, give do. me the number. I'm not sure Derek can go to a centre <laughs> no, no, yet, no. <laughs> but they might be able to, they might be able to help, which would be great. Um, obviously, the book is called The Power of Hope. I know yeah. that you've got a bracelet with hope on it there as well yeah, at the moment. Um, uh, hope is very much what's getting you through at the moment. What do you hope is going to happen in the next few months? Well, I tell you what, I think before this year, I didn't really understand what hope really is. I use the word an awful lot. I would often say things like, are you going to make it on time? Oh, I hope so. Which kind of men, I really want to get there on time, but I'm actually not sure I'm going to manage it. It was almost like a sort of a wish. And I think the power of hope is actually to do the opposite of that. It's not to think... I wish I was rich, it's to, or I wish I, you know, I wish Derek was well. It's to take what you want out of life, trust it's going to happen and make it concrete. And there are techniques in the book and techniques that people have helped me with to do that because otherwise, if you just wish for something, what you're actually thinking about at that moment is the absence of what you've got. So if you think, oh... I wish I could fit into a size 8 pair of jeans. What you're actually thinking is, I don't fit into a size 8 pair of jeans right now. And so it's about getting yourself into feeling what's good. And it's also not necessarily having the exact thing you want come true. Because not every... You know, Derek is going to be changed by this to a greater or lesser degree. So it's kind of thinking about a future which is something that you can enjoy and has purpose and has wonder in it, even if it's not necessarily the thought, the future we thought we were going to have in January 2020. So I think hope is actually a superpower if it's used in the right way. I don't really know what Derek's future will be. You know, I don't know. I mean, it's it's heartbreaking because he's probably the cleverest person I've ever met. And the thought of him, he is all about his brain, really. You know, his brain is what functions um, as what has got him everything in life, you know, from starting out as a young lad, lying in bed looking at posters of Roy Hattersley and wanting to change the world, which, by the way, is brilliant for me because it means that his formative years when other young boys were, like, having Kylie on their wall, he had to Roy Hattersley, so I kind of always... <laughs> we always used to joke that however bad things got and however, however ragged I looked... Sorry, Roy. Uh, I was going to look better than him when he woke up in the morning. But he, you know, I... Um, I don't know what it's going to be. I don't know whether he'll ever return to be a psychologist. I don't know whether he what whether he'll ever be able to walk again. I don't know what is going to happen for him. But I feel like we're on a path that is a valuable life, you know, and that is what I hope for. You know, I want him to have a life and I wanted us to be a family. And it will be changed, but it'll be different. Yeah. That's not a particularly clear answer, but it's the only answer I have. No, that's, no yeah. I completely understand. Um, 
are you okay? Is everything all right with you? Because obviously it's, it's I mean, everyone's very keen to make sure uh, that Derek's all right and he's home, but yeah. are you okay as well? Well, sorry, I'm getting a bit emotional. I, I, I think so. I think I'm okay, Jenny. I mean, I don't, I, I don't, I've got incredible people around me that are so supportive and I've got, I've got a great job and I've got lots of wonderful things. I mean, you know, um, I, I think I am okay, you know, but that's not to say that, um, that there aren't times that are quite tough, you know, and I think there'll be more tough times to come. I think there's a lot of emotion to deal with. Um, but that's life, isn't yeah. it? But you it's know? just from you. I mean, when you're in a relationship like that as well, I know from my mm. husband, he does certain things. And I have no idea yeah. what those things are, to be honest. But yeah. if he wasn't doing them, I would suddenly be aware that, you know, there's lots well, of things. Well, I mean, I've had a year to realise that, um, yeah, I mean, Derek... You know, he did a huge amount. I mean, he's always done a huge amount that I wasn't aware of, really. I mean, there's an awful lot that I've had to learn. Like, as soon as he got sick, I couldn't access our bank accounts. I couldn't access our money. Uh, we didn't have a power of attorney in place, which, by the way, everyone should get. Um, because he was sick, and even though I was his next of kin, I wasn't... I'm not really in a position to make even medical decisions for him. Uh, I did, I had to, because it was an emergency, you know. Um, but it's it's a complicated thing. So, yes, yeah, suddenly we couldn't access all sorts of things. There was an awful lot that I hadn't... Well, I don't think Derek even realised wasn't in place because you go through life not thinking that the worst will happen, don't you? So um, there's a lot of practical stuff that's not been done and he did all of that kind of thing because I'm really useless um, I'm one of those people that only knows when there's a problem when I can't get any money out the cash point <laughs> so I'm properly useless I've had to get very grown up and um, start thinking about things and planning them and organising them and also just around the house I mean you know I never picked up a power drill so um, but I've now got a great tool belt <laughs> So um, I'm I'm getting into I'm getting into the uh, the gadgets, but yeah, there's a lot to do, and also obviously you know it's um, I've always admired single mothers. I think it's almost impossible task to be everything at once, and um, effectively, I'm not a single mother because Derek is there and he's in the home, so it's not taking away him as a father, but in terms of the practicals I am you know yeah. so um, there's a there's a lot to deal with yeah. yeah well listen thank you for being so <laughs> open and chatting and it's been lovely to catch up with you it's been and really lovely to catch up with you and thank you for being so lovely it's so lovely to be able to see you every morning Jenny Aww. and hand over the baton <laughs> it's really nice look, even when I'm running late <laughs> well look I'm just looking forward to hearing how things progress over the next few months and as okay. you say the power of hope well hopefully everything will keep moving in that Improving. Kind it's of a superpower, the, hope, the, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. We want everything to keep going in that right direction. Thank you for doing that today. Thank you, Jenny. Thank <laughs> you, Kate.